Hey, what's up, everybody? This is an open discussion with C3 Films. My name is Chris, and this is... Cheryl. And today, we're going to be talking about episodes four and five of What If. So these, these stories are all anthology stories. They're not connected. Uh, we just picked these episodes because we felt like they were the most interesting to talk about. Um, there are six episodes out as of, the cor- as of this recording, and they're coming out every week. So at least for the purposes of joining our conversation, feel free to go and check out episodes four and five, and then watch this episode because we will be going into spoilers for these episodes. And since they're the most interesting of the batch that we've seen, you, you want to do yourself a favor and probably not let us spoil it for you. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So, for you, Cheryl, like, what did you, before we start talking about talking about the individual episodes, like, what did you just think about, like, the concept of this kind of what if, this Twilight Zone, um, that's basically Marvel's version? So, I initially thought that it was a cool idea. Um, It seemed interesting to me, but then I was also, like, it's just going to be an animation, so I thought it was kind of going to be like a storyboard kind of thing where it was just really simple, more mm-hmm. about the story and less about the way that it looks, but actually it looks pretty cool, and I really like the uh, the, the way the animation is. It looks really good. I, I forget that I'm watching an animation because it looks so much like the world of, um, of Marvel, and they they do the, the characters to look just like the actors and they even have um almost all of the original cast for these characters come back and do the voices for their characters so um i think it looks good um i think the concept is great it's super interesting um although like some of them i didn't think kind of made make sense to me like uh in terms of like one choice makes a different universe it's kind of more like well let's just say this happened and then right and then we'll make that into a different universe they don't really ex- like they they don't really give the characters a chance to make a different choice which i think would have been more interesting but um right yeah, who's to say yeah it can kind of feel kind of arbitrary even the thing that they choose to change um like the like we're not gonna go go into depth on episode six, but like the question of episode six is a very it almost feels random where it's kind of like okay yeah I guess that could have happened but it's like if that's the case you could say any villain did this thing or was here at this time um, I get I get the reason but at the same time it the the question can feel less tied to like specific events in Marvel and kind of almost feel like in in certain ways I mean episode 5 feels like that too it's like what if there was a zombie apoc- like zombie outbreak because of Janet Van um Janet Van Dyne um and it's like I mean I guess that could be a thing but it, it just as easily could have been something else it didn't even have to be a zombie apocalypse it could have been whatever so that one like things like that can feel kind of arbitrary but Overall, just the ability to explore something that's fun, and I'm not sure if you know, but the What If um, brand comes from a series of comics that was coming out when I was a kid, and it was What If comics, where they would do something similar, like, what if Storm was the leader of the X-Men, what if Rogue, like, was able to touch people or things like that, um, and usually they were, I, what, what it, I think another one was, what if like Black Cat and Spider-Man got together. But um, most of them, they're usually, they would usually end in kind of a, some of them, most of them ended in finite ways where it's like this won't continue, like characters die or things like that. Um, So they're really intended to just be one-offs. And so that's kind of why this adopts a a similar formula. Um, and even like the Marvel Zombies particular story, that is a comic book storyline, Marvel Zombies. So they just decided to adapt that and have it in animation for, I guess, the fans of those works. Yeah, and I and I think that it's a cool idea. Um, it's always fun to see what else could happen, um, especially like I know I know um, DC is different. They have Flashpoint. They have all these different um, Earths, uh, which 
open opportunity for a different way to tell stories um so i feel like this is just another way of doing that uh and i'm all for it i'm all for it being different it just is just really interesting to see the characters that you know in a different light um and you know they're all they're all really different so it's kind of hard to say like i think some of them are good and some of them are not that good so Right. Well, I mean, we can go ahead and start talking about um, episode four, which is the one about Doctor Strange specifically. So what if Doctor Strange lost his, instead of losing his hands, he lost his heart? Uh, That's basically what the episode is asking. And the heart is his girlfriend. She's in the car with him this time. And when they go off the cliff, she dies. And... I, I will say for me it was a very it was very surprising seeing this storyline because it is very very similar to an anime series that it's very famous called Steins Gate. It is like almost the exact story behind behind that that visual novel first. Um, so the concept of it wasn't new to me, but it was cool to see that concept played out in an American story and allow for an American audience to kind of see this ty- this type of um, time travel and the idea of like absolute absolute moments or absolute constants things that time will not change in um, Steins Gate they called them the convergence this is the point where all timelines meet like this specific event will always happen for Spider-Man you could call it Uncle Ben dying like Uncle Ben will always die because that's the only way he becomes Spider-Man so I I found that concept intriguing um how, how did you feel overall about that um, I wasn't too surprised by it because uh, I watched Doctor Who and that's kind of like one of the things that they talk about is there are fixed um, points of time that cannot be changed. So that concept isn't new. And I, I guess like, you know, I generally don't like playing around with, um, with time um, <clears throat> because it, it gets, you know, it gets complicated, it gets a little fuzzy, like, what are the rules and stuff like that. I feel like the rules here didn't really bother me too much, but then um, I did have questions like, well, if he goes back in time, does that mean he doesn't have the um, the time Have-Aka stone Mono? anymore? Because I don't yeah. see him wearing it. Does that mean he has to live for another two years and redo everything again every time he tries to change it? Um, but, I mean, that aside, um, I... If, if I ignore that kind of stuff and just go with, like, the concept, the concept isn't new. Um, mm-hmm. But I do like the way that it ends um, because... Of it's, course you do. Of course I don't. Um, because, <laughs> <laughs> because it's not a happy ending and it's not what you expect. And it just kind of gives you that, like, that, like, hole inside where, like, when it ends, you're like, that's how it ends? Like, yeah. there's no more. And I don't know why I really like that kind of stuff. Um, I, I think it's just because, um, you know, it's it, it's like real life, right? If you make mistakes, you can't fix them. You just have to deal with the consequences of the choices that you make. And just so happens this guy made really bad choices. and Everybody paid for it. Everybody paid for it. And it's, it, it's just like, it's like not only... I think it's just because of how much suffering there is in this that, like, um, it's just real, you know? Like, in in everything we watch, like, not everything we watch, but it's just so common for us to be shown things where everyone is happy and most people are happy or they overcome something and um, and then they they keep going and stuff. But that's not real life. Like, sometimes... Mm -hmm things go really really wrong and along the way you make mistakes and um and then you know life is horrible and that's that's what this was you know like something happened to him um and then he went back and he made a poor decision of reliving the death of his love over and over and over again um so much so where it like destroyed him um, because he became so obsessed with it, and I think, like, experiencing it so many times really drove him mad. 
uh, and then yeah. ultimately destroyed the universe. <laughs> yeah, and it made him unstoppable. Like, so that aspect is also very similar to Steins Gate. I won't get into any more specifics about than that, but like the idea that a traumatic event experience it over and over again can change the person who you are from a from another version of yourself that didn't have to experience that at all and what happens when those two versions of yourself meet right and i really liked um i liked a couple of things about how it was handled but it also very it felt very similar to I got an Anakin Skywalker kind of kind of vibe when he was talking to the um, the ancient one, and she tells him like this path leads to darkness, and he's like, because he says like, no, I'm not gonna give up, and he has that look, and I'm like, oh, that's an Anakin Skywalker. I'm gonna save Padme. Look, I like it. Oh, Doctor Strange about to go dark side. Let's go. <laughs> and I got I like legit excited, and kind of like you. Um, it's not that I necessarily don't want happy endings, but I can appreciate when things feel like they're working the way they that they naturally would in within the the rules that the world established. So, like in this world, Doctor Strange basically just takes all the powers of all these celestial like gods and takes them into himself, and then you find out like this twist that the ancient one split. Doctor Strange into two people, um, two virgins at the point at that choice point. He can either like go back in the past or choose not to. And so they try to get the Strange that chose not to to fight the game. The Strange that chose to, but the Strange that chose not to literally has no prep time. Has not gotten ready for this fight. They have he has like a a shield that kind of blocks the ability to like hurt him for a little while, but. The other Doctor Strange, you got to think, has been studying for centuries because he goes back in time to this library, spends centuries studying in the library, and then before that had actually watched his girlfriend die over and over again while trying to save her. We don't know how many times he did that. He's been doing this for a while. And then he – so not only does he have all this knowledge over centuries, but then he also has all this power from the celestial gods. He shouldn't lose to a Doctor Strange – that just decided to walk out of the room because he didn't want to go back in time and then now has to fight this guy. So when you see the good Doctor Strange lose and get absorbed, I like legitimately felt giddy inside because I'm like, yes, this is how it, this is what should happen. He should not win. (laughs) Yeah, it makes sense. Um, I also think it was cool that he actually talks to um, the watcher watcher at the, uh, at the end. Um, because I mean, if if anyone is gonna notice the Watcher, it is gonna be Doctor Strange. Yeah. Um, and so I thought that was a cool uh, idea, a cool concept. Um, and I also thought it was funny that um, at the very beginning, I don't know if you picked up on it, but the Watcher in the Watcher's monologue, he says. Um, that there is going to be some strange consequences. And I was yeah. like, ah, oh, that was good. I got that one. <laughs> <laughs> you got to appreciate it. They, they know what they're doing. Um, yeah, I appreciate him being able to talk to the Watcher, too. And I like the conversation the Watcher had with him. What the Watcher even says, if I could just punish you, I would. But I can't because, as you should know, anytime you interfere with time, it leads to destruction. And you're just like, Oh, oh, way to drive the lesson home. All right, I, I, I get it, but oh, man, that, that sucks. And he even says, I could warn him, like, at the halfway point, he's like, I could warn him and tell him there's another way or to change his path, but I can't interfere. Besides, it's, I don't think he would listen anyway. And you're like, yeah, he wouldn't. <laughs> he wouldn't. Oh, man, it's good. That's some good writing right there. <laughs> Yeah, so that was a very enjoyable episode. And then the next episode is um, like another kind of, yeah, it's another kind of apocalyptic event. But uh, yes, yeah, based around zombies, where as we briefly mentioned Janet Van, Van Dyne um, it catches a zombie virus in the quantum realm, somehow makes it back with, um, what's his name? Not Scott Lang, but uh, Hank Pym, and then that it just goes from there, and it's, they start infecting everybody. What did? How did you feel about this storyline? Um, I, I guess it starts with 
it starts basically around the Infinity War um, part of the movies where uh, Hulk gets sent back down to Earth, and when he gets to Earth, everybody's a zombie. Uh, yeah, how did you feel about the overall handling of it? I think out of all the episodes, one to five, that I've seen, this one was the best one. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was cool how even though they're zombies, they still had their zombie, uh, their non-zombie powers. And, yeah. Um, and so that made them even scarier. Um, and then I was surprised when, like, people were dying off. And I was like, oh, no, no. Like, I mean, the Avengers are already dead. They're already zombies. Yeah. Um, and we start kind of in the middle of the apocalypse. So, um, like, everything's already bad. And and, um, and then we have um, kind of like a... I think it's very balanced with um, the jokes. Because we have Paul Rudd's <laughs> character. Uh, and then we have Spider-Man. Uh, and they keep it kind of light for, you know, what it is. Um it being a very dark episode. So I, I thought that was a good balance. Yeah. So I was mixed on Spider-Man specifically. I thought that it was cool when they saw his explanation, when he has that moment with hope and she basically is like, how can you stay so positive? And he has that moment where he explains, well, I have to, because I've lost so much and I, and it's important. My aunt may used to say like, there's a lot of strong writing in there. And in that moment I was like, okay, I can appreciate this. But I'm not going to lie, I felt a little taken out of it when he was making a video for how to survive the zombie apocalypse, kind of like a Zombieland-style thing, when people are dying and arguably, most likely, people he knows have died. It felt very weird that he was like making this fun, kind of playful, survive-the-apocalypse zombie movie thing. So that kind of took me out of it i didn't like that as much but when we're into the actual them interacting and him just trying to be a positive force when everybody else doesn't see things his way um then i i was more along the lines that you were where i i I felt better about it and i liked it and i felt balanced yeah after after that part is um because that that also took me out of it a little bit but then i was also like well it's spider-man i guess <laughs> uh, i guess this is a spider-man way to go um right. yeah and then i was like i thought it was hilarious when um happy was like blam blam blam, blam. blam, blam. <laughs> that was yeah funny. and then i was Talk like the oh, no, happy yeah died. Yeah, and then and and then when Sharon kills him, she's like, "Blam." <laughs> yeah, and then when Sharon dies, Hope is like, "I'm covered in Sharon," and I was like, "Oh my god, that's dark." How by the dark? way, it's dark and funny. <laughs> but I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is this is such a crazy episode." Like, I literally <laughs> felt like I did, and I think that's probably why I I, I liked it so much because like I just didn't know what was gonna happen because it's a zombie episode anyone is up for grabs like anyone could die um yeah yeah and yeah i i i really like the jokes in in that episode um yeah the um it's interesting too about this episode is that it kind of i don't i don't know if you've seen dawn of the dead but it kind of has a dawn of the dead ending where quick brief spoilers minor spoilers for dawn of the dead film friend a film movie where the end of the movie it ends on a like kind of hopeful they're they have a plan to get somewhere they've gotten the transportation to be able to transport themselves to the place that they think is safe and then it's the end of the movie and then when they get to the place they think is safe it turns out it's actually not safe and then credits so that's kind of the feeling that's kind of what this movie does like they have this plan to get to Wakanda to try to make this cure and Wakanda is the only place that they know quote unquote is safe but they need transportation to get there they go through all the trouble to get the transportation and then once they get the transportation and they get to where they're going the place that you thought was safe is already overrun by zombies and then credits and the the feeling is that they will not be successful in their mission so Theoretically, you can actually make the argument that everybody dies. Yeah. I mean, I think the best part about the way that it ended was they didn't actually show the way it ended. Yeah. Um, And, like, you you literally just see, like, oh, inside Wakanda there are zombies, and then there's freaking Thanos with 
his gauntlet of with all the um the stones the infinity it. stones and then we already established that they they keep their powers as zombies so yep. i'm like oh snap and they like they just yeah. let you make up in your own mind how it's gonna end um mm -hmm. which i think is always uh well you know if you do it right it's such a great way to have an well, I think we know how the ending's going to be because I think you just said it when you had your reaction to seeing the the ending set up, which was, oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, Blame yourself no, for that one. No pun intended, but that was a good one. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> watch, back the, watch the video back later. You'll see that when you said it, I literally reacted like, oh, that was good. And then I realized you didn't you didn't mean to do it. I was like, oh no, Errol. Uh, <laughs> but but you're right though. You're right. And there's some crazy moments that happen in this. From you know Janet getting like she doesn't actually get bit bit, but she's like cut and she had blood on her, so it got in her. But she goes giant to like kind of save them and get them over and un like over the zombies and stuff. And then you find out they're being held at bay by Vision, and Vision was. Whew, Vision was full mad scientist in this one. He up here feeding pe parts of people to his dead girlfriend. Like, yo, bro, <laughs> you a robot. You supposed to know better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, the, what the heck? I know. I was like, aren't you supposed to, like, not really have feelings? Um, but also, like, when he decided to, like, suicide, I was like, can you at least just wait until everyone's on the plane? Gone? Or... Yeah, right, bro? You're, like, you're what are you doing? You're doing a disservice here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm all for you, like, you know, making amends and atoning as well, but how about you do it when we are gone? Because if you kill yourself right now before that chick is dealt with, we still have to deal with a zombie Scarlet Witch, which you don't want to deal with normal Scarlet Witch. So you really don't want to deal with a zombified Scarlet Witch. That just sounds terrible. So, yeah, no. Um, I was very mad at that. I was, I was, he was a bad vision in, the, in this episode. Very yeah. bad. Yeah, I did not enjoy that part. Um, and it was super dark, too. Um, I guess, like, the other thing that I thought was cool about this episode was that you had, like, Avengers fighting Avengers, right? So it's kind of like Civil mm. War, but in yeah. another way. And it, it, it's more, like, um, scary, I guess, because the the zombie versions of the Avengers are not holding back at all. So right. um, I feel yeah. like it's a, it's, it's a more fair... Um, scenario of civil war uh, where like they actually are trying to kill each other as opposed to just fighting each other right yeah and there was a lot of cool like moments I love uh, some of the winter soldier action sequences that he got but I also like just seeing the interactions with characters that didn't really get to interact that much uh, in the movies so we didn't really get to see Okoye interacting with any of those characters really um i don't I, yeah i'm trying to think back she might have interacted with i don't even know if we've seen her interact with bucky on screen even though bucky would have been in wakanda so yeah it's it's cool that we can make this scenario where these characters that never talked or or at least they might have met but they never really talked are now getting to play off each other and that's one of the things that i really liked about it yeah, and they also chose characters that are not, like, the main, main characters, right? Like, right. we have Happy, we have Sharon, we have Bucky, we have, um, what else do we have? Just, uh, I think there was, like, another guy that I didn't even really know. Who this he random was. Russian guy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I, I think it's cool that they had that, because, you know, we, we already see enough of everyone else, so it's nice to, to give a little bit more light to these other characters. Agreed. And... I'm sure that some of the other episodes will or have done uh, some of this, so that's probably what I'll be excited to see as I keep going. Is there anything that, like, uh, watching these episodes and watching as much as you have watched, we always talked about two episodes here, but you've seen more than two, but after watching all those episodes, are you excited about what's to come? I think there's supposed to be like a 13... No, I think it's supposed to be like an eight-episode season or something like that, or... I can't remember, but it's a short season, but 
like I think we have more episodes coming. Are you excited about what else they might come up with? Um, I don't particularly have very strong feelings about them because I think they're most they're they're not um because they're so short and they're standalones. <clears throat> It does. I feel like it doesn't keep me as captivated because you know there's no cliffhangers. There's no like, what's right. gonna happen next? And like some of them, I wish like we could stay in that world a little mm. bit longer. Like we can have a couple episodes of zombie apocalypse. Um, right. I mean, it's supposed to be short and sweet, but some of them are so interesting that I'd want to keep going. Like I could watch a whole show about this. Um, mm. Then we have other ones where like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Next. <laughs> right. No, that's true. That's a good point. Um, oh, thank you, Rain. Nine episodes. So, yeah, so it looks like we have three more left. And, I mean, that's one good thing about the comics. If you want to check out more of that zombie world, there's a whole comic uh, series devoted to it. Um, maybe eventually you'll get your wish and it'll get animated. But, uh, yeah, until then, this uh, this preview in the comic is all you got. That's true. We gotta upvote episode five. <laughs> <laughs> so that Sh- so that Cheryl can get her her thirteen episode run of uh, <laughs> Marvel Zombies. Um, but yeah, but I think the last thing that I wanted to say is just that I was surprised by the animation. You briefly mentioned the animation earlier, um, but I just kind of I agree with you. I wasn't sure what I was expecting, and I think it surprised me. Uh, how much the animation style that they chose works and how much it feels like it's a part of the world that we've already watched to the point where I don't find myself really questioning it. And in many ways, I think that, especially when I was watching the Doctor Strange episode, seeing the things that they were doing in that episode made me kind of think that these movie characters really kind of work in animation. Um maybe even more so than they work in live action because there are certain things you can do and it looks natural, like when Doctor Strange is sucking in all these creatures and turning into the creatures briefly before turning back to human. Like, that can look really cheesy in CG, but it looks really good in animation. So, and there was that awesome shot where you have, like, the cre- the shadows on the wall, the creatures, and then they, like, kind of come down into one shadow and then Doctor Strange emerges from it. I'm like... That is, like, maybe you can do that 3D, or maybe you can do that live action and make it look good, but it looks really cool in 2D. So, I I was very, so I was surprised at how much I liked it. Yeah, it, it almost feels like it's a combination of live action and, um, like, making you feel like you're watching a live action because of um, the characters taking after the actual actors. But then it also is in the style of a comic book. Um, <clears throat> I feel like it's a comic book that you're watching, but then you also feel like, I don't know, like, it's just, there's just something about the art that kind of combines, it's like right in the middle in the sweet so- spot between uh, a comic book and live action. <clears throat> yeah, no, I 100% agree. So, yeah, was there any other final thoughts you had before we uh, wrap it up? Okay, so yeah, so that's uh, us talking about uh, the What If series on um, Marvel's What If series on Disney+. Plus. So you guys can go out there and check it out if you have a subscription. Have you guys enjoyed it so far? What episodes have you seen that were your favorites? Did you love episode 4 and 5 like we did, or was a different episode your favorite? Whatever you thought, comment below, let us know. And while you're down there, if you give us a like, share, and subscribe, even if you don't though, I have been Chris, and this has been... Cheryl, and we'll see you all next time.